the first thing I want to mention is to keep organized and keep the lifters where they came from. Step one, it's assembly. The idea here is to smack them extremely hard against something that's not going to damage the follower. Some will come out easier than others. The trick is to hit them really, really hard and not hurt yourself. This may take several tries. How about that music, huh? You need to be relaxed to do this procedure, so I chose something adequate. Except for the previous step where you're cracking them open against a piece of wood. You pretty much have to be upset to get that to work. So I'd recommend doing that the day before. I like to remove these retaining rings for a more uh, thorough cleaning. I just do this with the tip of an X-Acto knife or any other pointed object. Comes out pretty easy. This is the check valve assembly. As you can see, it's full of varnish and caked on remnants of oil. Gently squeeze and pry to open the check valve. That doesn't take much force, just a gentle pull. Don't lose that tiny little spring inside the cap because it is very small. It usually stays inside the cap, but be ready. Here's a little ball inside the check valve. Also very tiny and worth cleaning because this could have some varnish built up on it. Let's review the assembly. Cylinder, retaining ring, piston spring, cap, check valve spring, ball, piston, and tap it. Mind you, I made up some of these names, so. Look at the nasty oil the ball was sitting in. Look at that varnish. Can't see it on that. Now it's time to clean. I like to first soak the parts in simple green or the degreaser of your choosing. I take them out and put them in this little uh, container to be rinsed. Keep the small parts on the magnet for the rinse and for the next chemical step. I found the magnet works well. I like to rinse it with hot water in between these steps. But you can clean these parts however you feel is best. During all these soaking and rinsing steps, I keep the small parts on a magnet. So I just go ahead and put the magnet inside there and, and let all the little small parts stick to it so they stay held together in one cohesive unit. This degreaser I actually found in Walmart. It was like 20 or $30. And it really does take off varnish well. I let these parts soak for a couple hours. Um, Took me, you know, several nights to do this, but I wasn't in a rush, so I did it this way. Uh, I would label the parts going in and out of bass and had a little system going. Uh, I just labeled them with a, a Sharpie marker, even though the, the marks go away after soaking. But, you know, I kept track of what was going where and was able to do it that way. Look at that difference in the parts after they're soaked and cleaned. The whole point of doing this is to clean your parts because there's nothing physically wrong with them. They just have so much gunk on them that the valves, the check valve isn't seating. So this whole video is all about cleaning really. Listen to that, it's squeaky clean.
even though these little parts have nothing to do directly with the valve seating, I like to clean them as well as possible because, like the comment says here, the last thing you want is for a little debris to dislodge from one of these parts and, and make its way onto the, the ball seat and, and ruin your work. So I, I like to clean every part and make it as clean as possible like it came from the factory. Keep in mind that now you've taken the oil off of these parts, they will rust, especially since they're wet. So I like to dry them as much as possible like I just did with the paper towel and then give them a quick spray in WD-40 as soon as possible. Here I'm just gently squeezing it to kind of remove any water droplets that are big enough to come out. You don't want to damage the spring while drying it, of course. Here are all the parts, ready to go, nice and clean, ready for reassembly. Assembly time. Notice I'm still using the magnet to keep the small parts because they will roll around your bench and get lost. First thing I like to do is put on a little retaining ring. No special tools needed. It's pretty, pretty light pressure. You can do it with your fingertips. Next, the check valve spring just gets dropped in to the little pocket in the cylinder. Now we're going to assemble the the check valve. I put the spring in the cap first and the ball on top. Then I snap the piston over the cap like this. Just a little wiggle and it snaps right in. Now this fits in here, it's a very precise fit, so it needs to go in straight. As soon as you line them up straight, it'll go right in. Mind you, there may be a little trap there that uh, gives you an extra spring force, but don't worry about it. Now it's time to fill them, pre-fill them with some oil. I hold them between pliers like this, and uh, just fill them up with whatever motor oil you're gonna run in your car eventually. This oil is probably gonna live in here for a long time, so I don't bother with breaking oil. Here I'm squeezing out the air. Uh, some came out of the outside. This is normal. My manual says to let these sit overnight for 30 minutes before you put the heads back on the car. This is to allow the, uh, the lifters to collapse back down. I continue to bleed, just adding oil, opening them, compressing them. Now I'm to the point where uh, I'm gonna actually open up the check valve with an X-Acto knife to let out air bubbles through the ball. Try not to hurt yourself or damage anything if you use an X-Acto like I did. Any other pointed object would work, like a toothpick or anything. The idea is just to push the ball so that air comes out and just repeat it until no more air comes out of the check valve assembly. So all the air is out of that check valve piston assembly. I uh, lube up the tap a little bit, slide this right in, and give it a little push to get it past that retaining ring that you worked so hard to, to whack out of there. And that's it. Uh, notice I've renumbered these and they're ready to go back in now. Thanks for watching.